Welcome to everyone I know, the podcast where we argue about the mundane. We're here, again, in the Troy Castle, in the sky, in this recording studio to the stars. We're here without my brother, Chris, but I'm here with my producer, Brendan. Hello. This episode of Everyone I Know is brought to you by you, the patrons. Oh, you give us money, you stupid bastards. Why do you do this? Why do you make such bad decisions with your life? If you got extra money, why don't you open a homeless shelter? Why are you giving money to a stupid podcast? Come on, this is your wake-up call. It's also brought to you by Audible.com, I guess. Uh, you can get an audiobook and support Jeff Bezos' um, terrible stuff uh, by going to audibletrial.com forward slash EIK. They give us $15? I have no idea. They've given us like $30 total, so it's been pretty <laughs> sick. Uh, we did get Taco Bell once, emergency Taco Bell, to keep the troops happy on that a is true. special recording day. Oh, man. I'm just so happy to be here with you guys. We have the pleasure of having a repeat guest this week. We have a musician, a explorer, a third thing. <laughs> DJ Psoriasis, a.k.a. Zach Sedefian. What's up, Zach? How you doing, man? Very Thanks good. Thanks for having me. Good to have you back. Zach, what did you do immediately before you got here? I busted my fucking ass, man, under the Green Island Bridge. <laughs> Shout out to Troy's infrastructure. <laughs> There's something sticking out of the floor right near a big robot picture. So I think it's kind of... <laughs> do you hear that, Mayor Madden? Get down there and fix it. You know the mayor's name? Yeah. Let's get him on the podcast. He came to my door once. Oh, yeah. You yeah, told me about that. Campaigning. He walked on your scary murder street. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I'm bleeding out of my hand and uh, can't lift my right arm. But There's I'm worse here. places to be bleeding. Yes. Penis, right? That's what you're getting at? Good point. Yeah, you don't want to bleed out of there. Zach, I made you no a song. intended for the point, eh? Last week, last time Zach was on the podcast, um, I m didn't make a song because I got my dates screwed up and I made the person for the next week's song. And I felt very bad about it because Zach's the only person that's ever asked about it <laughs> at that point. He's like, where's my song? I was like, I didn't make it. I'm so sorry. <laughs> but I did make a song now. And now we play it. Thank you. Go, Brendan. I love you. Um, I don't know what to tell you. I can't really. I just got to start with something. I got to start with some type of inspiration. So... Keanu Reeves listen to an audio recording of the cow that he's eating being killed. <laughs> yeah, uh, that was uh, Zach's I'm voice. I'm flattered by that, man. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you want to check out some of Zach's videos, you can go to Zach's YouTube channel at DJ Psoriasis with no formatting. I yeah, believe. I think it's just normal, just yeah. normal style, you yeah. know? That means I have to switch my Instagram to be normal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, without further ado, uh, those who listen to the cast, uh, you'll know. That <laughs> nice, nice fix. Nice. Without further ado, <laughs> we're going to go to the segment where I try to rush through the old man minute, but it's, it's time to listen to what my dad had to say about last week's episode. That's how I do this segment. <laughs> old man, look at my life. <laughs> Hello, EIK fellas. We're almost done with February, so spring is right around the corner. 
Sure, we're going to get blasted once or twice more, but the snow will melt in a day or two. Now we can look forward to spring and dying from COVID-19. Bring out your dead, bring out your dead. Let's go while we're still breathing. Topic 111. Magic music. Just a few sound bites. You mentioned NASCAR's Dale Earnhardt. When he died on February 22, 2001, a funeral home in Herkimer had calling hours. Shortly after that, a woman wrote a letter to the editor in the Utica Observer Dispatch. She said, and I'm paraphrasing from memory, I know his fans miss him, but is NASCAR really a sport? Think about it. They're making a continuous left-hand turn. Speaking of magic, remember the lame magicians we had at birthday parties? Jeff Sterling was the worst. Ed Sinker, a former attorney friend of mine, wasn't much All better. All Utica new magicians. Yeah. That's the new podcast is Utica magicians. And he broke his balls so bad, and you were seven or eight, that he yelled at you. Later, I spoke to him, and what I meant to say was, I'm sorry, Andy, was a disruption, but it came out every hell at my kid again. I'll kick your scrawny ass. <laughs> Topic wow. two. Very masculine. Hair out of hair. First off, space pens were a real thing in the late 60s. Parker pens marketed them, and they had some sort of pump so you could write upside down. The Soviets eventually copied the design, but made theirs out of concrete. A comb made out of hair. As you all know, I shave my head. I have an abundance of body hair, but I suspect it could only be manufactured into scouring pads. Pasta sauce made out of pasta, and now this. Have you guys ever seen Steve Blank? I suspect he may be a reptilian. Topic 3. <laughs> Papa Showdown. I find the Liberty Mutual Insurance, Limu, Emu, and Doug commercials to be particularly annoying. I'd like to see a death match between them and their Geico counterparts. As I went down the list, I eliminated the obvious losers. The gecko, the pig, the squirrels, the woodchucks, the camel, and especially that wimp Pinocchio. I decided on two of my old favorites, Mayhem and one of the cavemen. Geico would prevail. Love, old man. Not reading the rest. <laughs> <laughs> Edited for content. Silenced for truth. <laughs> Without further ado, we're moving on now to... Topic... Topic? What's happening? Oh, is that me? We've got new... <laughs> Zach brought a toy. Zach brought a very fun toy. And what's it called, Zach? This is a Coco Qantas. Coco Qantas in the house. Coco Qantas in the building. Moving on now to topic number... Topic number. Topic number. <laughs> That's the <a> stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Topic number one. <laughs> oh boy, that's fun. That's a fun little toy you got there. Oh man, I tried the delay, but. So I think we've um, we've talked about this topic before, but I thought it would be fun to talk about it again, even though I think we already did it. Um, and that topic is uh, guilty pleasure music. Ah, yes. Nice. I don't know if we... See, this is what I think happens. it's come up, but I don't think it's a topic we've, we've done. We've done over fucking 150, ep 3,000 episodes at this point. <laughs> it's like, fuck you, okay? If you if you still even remember what we were talking about in the first 50, thank you so much. Please subscribe to our Patreon. <laughs> but yeah, no, go ahead. I love you. Go. I, I don't know. I'm feeling very exuberant today. Go ahead. Well, I want to go around the table and just do what is what name a guilty pleasure a musical love of yours. You can start, Andy. I mean, this isn't really guilty because there are people who listen to this, but I like kind of style myself as like an electronic guy. But like Simon and Garfunkel fucking slaps. <laughs> and when I was moving out of my dorm room, the last dorm room I ever stayed in as a young man, um, I was playing like a bridge over uh, troubled water. <laughs> Uh, I think that's just Paul Simon. Is that just Paul Simon? Who cares? Um, and it, I was singing it at the top of my lungs, and then I realized that there were other people moving out as well, so I had to make eye contact with all the moms and dads and, um, you know, and kids as well. Well, after I was singing with the windows open, like a bridge over troubles, like I was really going through some shit through my, and my, uh, and my breakup with my dorm room. <laughs> um... I listen to, I don't know, I, I feel kind of guilty about this sometimes, but I listen to a lot of trap by, like, 18-year-old artists. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it just feels kind of weird that um, most of them are young and pretty bad at what they do, but I also really like that music. So it's That's either a guilty pleasure or a hipster pleasure, depending on how you present it. Like, if you're <laughs> like, oh, no, it's a guilty pleasure, it's a guilty pleasure. But if you're like, no, you guys don't understand. It's really good. <laughs> you guys just don't know. Then it's just a hipster pleasure. Well, I think it is really good. So it's <laughs> uh, so guilty pleasure, something that I think is something that I think is bad, but I still listen to. 
It just uh, depends on how you like size up the person that you're talking to. <laughs> um, Charlie XCX. Okay. You crash your car into a bridge. You nearly crashed your arm into a bridge. That's true. You don't care. You love it. <laughs> Not nearly. I think literally. <laughs> I did. <Yeah>. Literally. <laughs> um, I'll go deep for mine. I like Coheed and Cambria. Okay. The guy's voice is um, high. It's hard. It makes me nervous because I think about how hard it would be for me to sing those notes. I know yeah. people that just like them, just period. Yeah. Well, that's no unacceptable. Guiltiness. It's okay to like them as a guilty pleasure. It's not okay to really like them. <laughs> my my friend Skip <laughs> likes them a lot, and I respect Skip in his um, life. That's fair. I love him. Thank you. I Shout love out Skip. to Skip, whoever you are. He's my friend. Um, yeah, I think it's. I think everybody's got some kind of like guilty pleasure music they really like. But I mean, then there's also there's stuff that you just unapologetically like and think is good. Like I. I unapologetically love Grimes. Mm. I don't Ooh, care what anybody says. That's yeah, okay. Like all of it, even the the stuff now. The new album is amazing. Okay, I think it's her best album. Okay, well, mm. that is guilty. I you should <laughs> feel guilty for that. <laughs> I listened to what was it? just because she, she's a weirdo that is carrying Elon Musk's sperm blossom. Yes, that is a problem for me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Like that is where I draw the line. But no, I like I listened to one of her songs recently. I wasn't into it. Um, I I liked like you know back in the day, Grimes like Oblivion's great song, good song. Do 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 do. Da, 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 da. It's like uh, it's like tripped out mall mall rock, raw, mm. mall pop. Um, I'm trying to think about some other ones that I you know I, I I don't I don't know. I think everything I do is super cool and like fun and like i'm not ashamed now i i really like try to stay away from like the guilty pleasure mindset yeah, you're too cocky to have guilty pleasure i love everything i everything yeah. that i do is fucking weird and cool like i mean it's either it's either weird or boring and i think boring stuff is cool so like it's you know like i don't know i listen i whatever i try to put on like some jams for the for the homies like i i have to remind remember that it can't be like a 12 minute like interlude song mm. like that happens sometimes you know, when you're listening to electronic music, maybe it takes about four minutes to, to get going, to really, you know, get going. And maybe the best part of the song is only, you know, two measures long, but mm -hmm. it's all worth it, you know? Yeah, I feel like, I don't know, I, I feel like I'm embarrassed to listen to everything I listen to to somebody <laughs> in, yeah, a way, for sure. in a way. Like, um, I mean, I like it all, but I wouldn't necessarily like, you know, I don't know, put on some like hardcore drum and bass with a certain group of people or something. It's not really a guilty pleasure because I like it. But Zach, this is church. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's something I haven't gotten into yet. Gospel music. I tried the Kanye album, but no, that's not I a guilty pleasure. I fucking hate Kanye West so much. <laughs> yeah. No, I don't know. He's good. I, I, I think he's so overrated. I don't have the history with Kanye. So whenever I come to Kanye, like I never got into him in high school and stuff when he was, you know, when like graduation and stuff came out. But like... You know, I don't know. Whenever I come back to Kanye, I'm like, all right, this is fine. I don't know. I don't like how crazy he's become, you know? Yeah. That's scary. It's off-putting. Yeah. I think, I don't know, I just don't listen to the stuff he says and just, um, I just tell myself he's just joking. He's just playing a character. <laughs> I don't think his music's that good either, though. I uh, think, I mean, I definitely think that there are Kanye songs that are pretty fucking great and uh, define, yeah. like, a sound for a while. Like, he definitely owned, like, the mid-2010s. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know? For sure. Well, Brendan, what did you do? Where's your Kim Kardashian? Where's what? your Where's your reality show where they depict you having a mental breakdown? This is my reality show. <laughs> Are you having a mental breakdown? <laughs> I am if I have to keep talking about Kanye fucking West. I might have a ment be having a mental breakdown because I button my shirt so that my, my headphone cable is in my shirt. <laughs> so that's that's a guilty pleasure. I love it. And I'm guilty about it. Let's dissect the idea of guilty pleasures. Yeah. It's a very like um, hypothetical situation where you're in someone else's head, you're projecting your consciousness into someone else, and you're thinking that they aren't going to like it. Mm -hmm. I don't know if that's necessarily the case. I think it's, I guess it can be externally imposed, but I think it's more internally imposed. Okay. I think you're saying like you have a projection of yourself. It just doesn't jive what with your, tastes your are, persona. And then this thing just doesn't match uh, the reflection that you want your music to have on who you are that's pretty fair okay I'm yeah much. i can understand that perspective like i don't want to be the guy that likes coheed and cambria mm -hmm. <laughs> that's not the kind of guy i want to be i know those guys and i don't like those guys oh <laughs> you know what now i remember one that's a big guilty pleasure for me is fish 
Oh, oh fuck, fuck that! Guy. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, we just suck it. Here, I don't dude. care. Yeah, I'm fucking leaving. I, dude. Here's the thing about jam bands: all my good friends from Odeon to listen to them, and I love them more than I love the music. No, by a long shot. But I will. That's I've been what to, everybody says about jam bands because everyone knows it's shit. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah. I mean, that's true. Like, listen, I'm not gonna go to bat for John Fishman or Trey Anastasio or the, uh, the other guys, Gordon Lightfoot or whatever the fuck his name is. <laughs> <laughs> but like you know fish shows are fun everybody's having a good Just time acid in your fucking dorm room i can't do it anymore that's why i sing <laughs> i was like a bridge over troubled water because i could never do that again okay um yeah no i mean jam bands are probably like especially because i like came to the realization like not too long ago that i was like i'm probably like to most people like present as like a hipster um, I think all of us are just by default of yeah. being 20s and 30s. and <laughs> Yeah, like if you have like facial hair, you're a yeah. it's just this is how it is. But um, yeah, like whenever I'm like, oh yeah, you know, I, I've been to a couple fish shows, you know, people will be like, yuck. <laughs> mm. Yeah, it's terrible. It's fine. You know, it's, it's, um, it's, you know, a th- thousands of people dancing in circles. There's a man. The only on, thing on I the hate stage more than jam cleaner. bands are outside music festivals. <laughs> that I wholeheartedly oh, yeah. just, Outdoor music festivals. Yeah. Like, Outdoor music is the best. Ugh. What's wrong with yeah. you? I don't know if I've been to one. I've been to a f- uh, Grateful Dead show indoors though and that was that's just it just solidified my hatred towards yeah, yeah, all yeah, jam yeah. bands i've been to three warp tours those are the only outside festivals i've been to i go to mm. i go to outdoor mess music festivals every summer boys okay camp I, bisco bro i've been to camp bisco i don't really know what that is but uh it's fine <laughs> camp it's, bisco uh, is, it is close enough to my wife's parents house that like you can hear it nice yeah. sick you get to hear the biscuits do a couple sets bro yeah Come on. you get to, oh, yeah. Have, you get to have drug adult yes. 20 somethings wander around town fuck yeah um yeah the disco biscuits okay so if you guys want to hear some inside uh inside uh jam band culture uh talk uh their disco biscuits and fish fans are kind of like mortal enemies um that's sick Disco biscuits are to fish fans what fish fans are to the rest of society. <laughs> so they like like the biscuits fans. Everybody thinks they're like you know dirt bags, like you know burnouts, you know uh, taking too many drugs, and now their brain doesn't work quite as good as it used to. Um, but yeah, no, I like outdoor music. It's great. You get to dance in the grass. You get to dance so much on the grass it turns to dirt and mud. <laughs> yeah. And then somebody looks you in the eyes and says, I need to go sit down. And you say, that's fine. Put on some sunblock. Drink some water. It's great. <laughs> what else are you ashamed of? All right. I bared my soul. You guys well, are clearly judging well, me. Remember my... last time I brought up uh, Always Be My Maybe, the yeah. Korean, <laughs> Korean American rom-com. That's sort of a guilty pleasure, but I'm not really embarrassed of it because it's good. <laughs> it made it onto the song this but, week. But, <laughs> that, was, that was his sample. Oh, it was? Yeah, because uh, they made Keanu Reeves uh, eat a hamburger or listen oh. to the cows and kill for the hamburger. Oh, that was my voice in that? I couldn't Yeah, even that tell. was your voice. Oh, shit. Yeah, I took it from your YouTube channel and I took it I, from I recognize the, the, the YouTube episode. one. Yeah, but... yeah. Okay. Um, what was I just saying? Um, Always be my maybe. Yeah, so like that's something I wouldn't imagine myself liking, but I turned it on one time and I liked it. So that's kind of in Brendan's definition of a guilty pro- guilty yeah, pleasure. Yeah, I would say that's that's that definitely qualifies, but that's much more respectable than fish. <laughs> what about cats? I can go lower. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> <laughs> you liked cats? Uh, well, let me tell you a little story about when I watched cats. Okay, me, my girlfriend Olivia, and our good friend Nick. Uh, we came home. We were at a bar uh, around the corner from our house. All our other friends went went home early. It was a streak of everyone going home at like 10 o'clock. So we're like, well, we got to stay out. We can go to a party. You know, we got to do something. So we went back to my house, downloaded a, a HD cam of cats, <laughs> and we watched it. And it was great. <laughs> Um, it was great in the sense of a nightmare. It was great in the sense <laughs> of, um, you know, just watching the, the decay of Western civilization <laughs> in front of you. There's a scene where Dame Judi Dench, uh, Knight of the British uh, Kingdom, and Sir Ian McKellen are both on screen and are both cats and are both singing a song about cats to each other. It's fantastic. And that's Cats, baby. And also the song Mr. Mistopheles kicks ass. I don't give a fuck what you guys think. Okay? This is why I have a problem with Guilty Pleasure, because I love this shit. All I right. I love to be the out man. 
I love to make people mad. I love to make people judge me. You know? Well, you're getting judged. Yeah, so. absolutely. Tell me what you're afraid of, and I'll tell you why you should not be afraid. Fear is in the mind. Fear is the mind killer. Dune. Uh, I am afraid of... Uh... Rejection. Uh, I don't really care. Um... Yeah, it's oh, horses. Question, I man. fucking hate horses. I hate horses, too. Yeah, now you got know. community, dude. Nah, horses fucking kick you. You're done. Yeah, I don't... I when I was working in insurance, fear. I had a claimant who got kicked in the face by a horse. Mm, oh, worst place to That was kicked. his injury. He tried to scam us. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. <laughs> that took a turn. Please tell me um, how how the, the sick man tried to scam you. <laughs> so it was a worker's comp case because mm-hmm. uh, he got kicked in the face at the Saratoga racetrack. Oh, sick. Jesus. Uh, dude gets kicked in the face by a horse and... Um, it fucked up his teeth, <laughs> obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and he tried uh, years, years, years later. I mean, it was like 10 years later. He's trying to bill us for uh, dental work on the other side of his mouth. But the bills were written in such a way that it made it sound like it was the other side of his mouth, mm. like the side that was injured, but it wasn't. They used a lot of double negatives and yeah. stuff. It was the not, <laughs> the not, not left, not, not left side. <laughs> yeah. No well, they problem. kept just saying like, you know, third molar, like they weren't saying the side. Mm-hmm. They were just saying like, oh, a second molar, you know, top or whatever. Teeth, Teeth stuff. But then uh, oh, all the way at the end, like in super fine print, it was like, you know, left. Mm. Uh, and it was not the left. It was the fucking right. Wow. I'm glad you denied that man his health care. You're welcome. <laughs> Guess what? Bernie Sanders 2020. He's coming, baby. He's coming for you. Um, he didn't fucking end up paying for it. It was just uh, whether our insurance company or his insurance company should pay. Or like whether we should pay for it or his insurance company. Was oh, were you, were you like accident insurance? It, workers comp. Workers comp. Right. Okay. Yeah. True. I should stop playing with this. Um, Plus, right. yo, fuck a guy that was working with horses at the Saratoga racetrack. Yeah, he's a bad guy. Probably. <laughs> he probably just murdered a horse with his bare hands. Yeah, that's <laughs> probably why he got kicked in the face. Mm-hmm. That's they, what they do over there. Moral of the story, don't don't get kicked by a horse. I'd love to not get hit, kicked by a horse, but I can't guarantee that that'll happen. What about, you mentioned a, 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 like a movie. Mm-hmm. So what's a movie guilty pleasure for you, Andy? <laughs> That's, yeah. no, that's, not, that's that's like a so bad it's good thing though a, like a movie that's legitimately bad that i'm trying to get people to watch and they just won't watch it is holy mountain by hodorowski except it's not a bad movie it's just people are uncultured swine and don't want to see sex. that's not a guilty pleasure you son of a bitch what holy mountain yeah, so, you ever uh, watch uh, it? that's like the ultimate hipster thing to yeah watch. Dude, absolutely no, a guilty pleasure is something that you're like yeah i know it's not great yeah. but i really like it no uh Whatever that movie is called, I forgot already. Holy Mountain. Holy Mountain. Something that only gets you points. Yeah, something that gets you cool something points. Something doesn't give me cool point. points with my girlfriend. I tried to have her watch it. She said no halfway oh, no. through. Yeah, you can't do during that. the scene when the lady's taking a shit on the toilet and the guy's in the room singing weird. It's it's yeah. Mm. She has blue hair. It's weird. Weird scene. Um, That's like saying you know, David Lynch is a guilty pleasure. No, David Lynch is just great, and some people don't get it. <laughs> yeah, but that's like you got to enter the world of the normals. You know, you got to be with the normies. We swim in a sea of normies. What is something that you you unironically like, but you know is shit? That's what a true guilty pleasure is. I feel like I'm just coming back to everything I do is dope as shit. I don't know. I don't know. I just, <laughs> Acid House. The whole Ooh. genre. I fucking love oh, it. Oh, yeah, okay. I fucking absolutely love it. It's like my number one thing. But if you, it's just the 303 going, beep, 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 for yeah. an hour. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's great when they take it away and then it's just the backing track and you're yeah. like, ah, that's good without that. Yeah. Then you come back. <laughs> there's a there's a great uh, Acid House song that I've been listening to a lot uh, called Emotinium by Roy of the Ravers. I don't know a single artist besides. C-Fax. Chaos AD. Oh, okay. And I don't even know why I know that. It's a good one. Yeah. Yeah, it's great. Um, yeah, Acid House is hard to explain to people. Um, drum and bass, I think, can be tough to explain to people, like, why it's good. This is like... It seems more accessible because, I guess, if you get somebody that's listened to, I don't know, The Powerpuff Girls fast theme song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> or, or somebody who likes... Uh, video games yeah they're like oh shit this is gran turismo music yeah exactly <laughs> or sonic music My- you, um you guys reminded me of this video um of uh do you know who justin broderick is no no uh he was one of the founding members of napalm death he was the founding member of godflesh oh is is this gonna be the jim carrey video where he's talking about napalm death 
No. Oh, okay. Because hmm. there is a video of that. It's great. There yes. is. Um, but uh, and now he does uh, Jezu, and he's got a couple other projects. But anyway, he's brilliant. And he's great. And um, there's this great clip of him where he's asked if he's going to be working with a trans DJ. <laughs> The joke or not, because I've seen this online, so I don't know if it's true or not, that you, you will be working with Fairy, Fairy Constant. Who? Fairy Constant, some, some uh, trans DJ. I don't know if it's true. It's a joke. I hate trans. <laughs> okay. Trans DJ? I'm working with a trans DJ. <laughs> Holy shit, that, that's absolutely hilarious. Yeah, yeah. yeah, somebody must have just made that up. Yeah. Trans DJ. Yeah, trans. <laughs> <laughs> trans DJ. Like, like, despised form of, of electro like, dance and music going is trans. They're like, how dare you? Like, yeah. probably the single most despised form of music. <laughs> Somebody's done that as a complete fucking yeah. joke. No. I dis that's hate speech, Brandon. Trans music is great. No, what the fuck is trans though? Is that that rhythm of the night? Is that that or what is that? I don't know if that counts as trans. I mean, it's just like '90s dance. But yeah, I know. That's what I'm I saying. I mean, trans music's like. You know, you're at that 160 BPM. It's that 160 really? BPM. Fucking sounds like somebody holding down one note on a synth. Yeah, it's like now you're just doing sandstorm. Sandstorm's kind of a trance song. It's not that different. Um, how dare you fucking you know, defame trance music here? But I, I guess trance is now a, a guilty pleasure that I have. Yep. I've been societally trained to hate myself. Thanks, Brendan. There we go. Trance music is characterized by a tempo lying between 110 to 150 BPM. 110 is slow as fuck. Repeating melodic phrases in a musical form that distinctly builds tension and elements through a track, often culminating in one to two peaks or drops. So that's what trans music is. You know what? Uh, here's a guilty pleasure that I have. I saw Dead Mouse in concert, but Dead Mouse is fine for some people, but I don't like them that much anymore. Yeah. Um, um, yeah, I've, that's just something I just won't listen to. I just can't. <laughs> I, just can't I won't even try it, man. I just can't fuck with like the... like. Just like the super popular electronic music. Like, if anyone's singing at any point yeah, on yeah. your song, like, what the fuck are you mm -hmm. doing? Like, god damn it. Kesha yeah. does not belong here. This is not Kesha's territory. Kesha did not bleed and sweat for this to happen. It's that whole, like, the blow up of dubstep. Yeah. Dubstep is a good. Yeah, yeah, I don't. What a month that was. <laughs> How dare you? That was my entire freshman year of so, college. I don't know. I don't know if you'll remember this, Zach, but we were in. We, we were both in a. Um, the recording class. I, yep. And we were standing outside waiting for the professor to arrive. Professor Albin Zach, really mm -hmm. brilliant professor. I love that guy. His book is amazing. And he gave me a B. Yeah. Because <laughs> I left class early one day and he said, if you leave class early one day, I take a whole letter grade off your shit. And I called his fucking bluff and he called mine. He's he was awesome. What a megalomaniac. I took yeah. I took more stuff with him after <laughs> that's that. But up. Uh, yeah. That's uh, so sick. we take that class. We we're standing outside one day and there were there was this there were two kids uh sitting there and one pulls out his phone, he's like, Bro, you gotta hear this dubstep song. I don't I, you I don't think you remember I have this. No recollection of this and he's like, Bro, bro, we gotta you gotta hear this dubstep song. It's got the sickest drop and he pulls out his phone. And he's going to play the bass drop on his cell phone. <laughs> and the other kid is like, oh, man, let me hear it. And they play it. And it's like. <laughs> and then just like, it's like. Bleh. Like, because there's no bass in the fucking phone. And it's just like, no, it literally just sounded like the song stopped. And they're like, oh, that bass drop was so sick. That's how they and fucking invented trap music. Dude. I think that both of those fucking guys. Fucking cuts out instead of, a, instead of a drop. I think it was great because it was clear that bo both of those guys were too embarrassed to admit that. Nothing happened. <laughs> <laughs> the guy that was playing it didn't want to admit nothing happened. And the guy he was playing it for didn't want to admit nothing happened. This is kind of like a dubstep equivalent of like, did, was it as good, was it good for you? I swear this never happens. But was, it, was it fine for you? Like, did, you know, do, do I need to do some more stuff? Um, sex is what I'm talking about, kids. That music was so bad. There, so, yeah, that shit is crazy, man. I that's, mean, like, that's really bad music right there. Yeah, yeah. like the American dubstep specifically. Because oh yeah, there I, was dubstep yeah, yeah, yeah. was was around for a long dubstep time. Dubstep was yeah, yeah. described you, totally different forms of music yeah. before that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, real like UK dubstep. That shit is actually good. Yeah, like, I thought I was gonna listen to it and still be kind of put off by it because it was gonna have the bro step influence or bro yes. step sound, but yes, bro step. it really is good. I don't really understand how that term got carried over to what it ended up being in the United States because it's not that similar. Yeah, I'm not sure. I know that dub is used for things you wouldn't imagine. I'm, apparently, like, dub is just used for, like, 
if you use a mixer as part of your music, yeah, yeah. you can call it dub. Yeah, because so the like, root is from use basically playing reggae music. Yeah, for a mixer. having yeah, a dub yeah. mix. Yeah. So uh, dub techno, that's like my favorite genre. It's not dub or techno. It's just some <laughs> dope ambient shit. <laughs> Um, yeah, no, I mean, like, there's there's plenty of stuff that came out of that movement that was fantastic. Um, I'm trying to think about, like, what the fuck, like, I don't know, like, craft work. You know, are you allowed to listen to craft work? Nah. No, nah, that's what I'm saying. Like, <laughs> I just, yeah, I'm not calculator in... music, like, that kind of shit. Like, I don't know, <laughs> craft work is, like, historical importance music. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. Same like, with, you like, you can't shit on craft work. Early I mean, Detroit techno, where yeah. they actually think they're cyborgs. Yeah. <laughs> right, like, Freddie Knuckles and shit like Electronic that. music is interesting in that. It dates itself real quick for some reason. Mm. I don't like if you listen to a lot of electronic music from the '90s. Some of it holds up, but a lot of it does not. You know, like, Apex Twin holds up. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's what that's what I was gonna say. That's the only one, and I think trip, you know, two trip others hop. that we all know. Yeah, Square trip, hop, and... tri- trip hop's great. Audiker, that's another band. Yeah, there's four four electronic yeah. musicians. Yeah, Apex that are good. Twin. You got Apex Audiker. Twin, Autecker, um, I don't know. Boards of Canada. Boards of Canada. Yeah, and, yeah. Uh, there's one more that gets a. Honorable mention, Square Pusher. Square Pusher. Oh, yeah. oh yeah. Square Pusher's still around. Still yeah, making yeah, yeah. good shit. It had a really oh, good there's song. A fifth. Just Fortet. Fortet. For, does Fortet count as the 90s, though? I think he's older than we think. Okay. <laughs> Boards of Canada is probably the most influentially unknown band. Because mm-hmm. like people that play music and, and like like are really into music know Boards of Canada, but mm-hmm. not a lot of other people do. Mm-hmm. But if you talk to musicians like across the board, they're always oh, yeah. a huge influence on so many different genres and musicians, musicians. people who like drugs. I uh, finally got into them and um, someone pointed out that it was the uh, salad fingers song yes. that I was listening to. Oh, I got a good story about that. You wear the handsome stranger. So I had never really listened to boards of Canada at one point and um, my, and my friend Baird, who was just on the podcast, he uh, gave me, he was like, you got to listen to this album. And I forget what the, which album was. It was a, uh, was it Gaddy? What's the one that has That's that track that on it? The red, so, the red. Yeah, album, so he yeah. gives, me, he Gio tells Gatti. me to listen to that. So I'm in the car, and and me and my wife are driving, and we're both like, we just like felt really uncomfortable all of a sudden. <laughs> and I'm like, it's not that the music doesn't sound that uncomfortable, but something about this is making me feel just creeped out. Yeah. And it wasn't until later that I realized, oh, this is the music from Salad it, Fingers. Yeah. So I'm like in my head, <laughs> breasted spin. It was actually the same thing for me. I didn't realize right away. Like someone was like, I heard my girlfriend. Yeah, but she was like, yeah, we. I heard this before for sure from like an old creepy video or mm-hmm. something. It's yeah, scary. it just it like it brought me to the feeling of salad fingers without reminding me it was salad fingers yeah. so well, it just it, i was like oh god i feel gross right now <laughs> that whole album uh got like a pretty not like they didn't get bad badly reviewed but people were like this is so much darker than music has a right to children like it's very scary hmm. it's because like it's like embedded with like references to like david koresh and like that kind yeah. of stuff mm-hmm. so it's like a bunch of weird shit embedded it's a very culty album which is cool hmm. All right, let's move on. I'm not afraid of anything. I'm not afraid of anyone. How about exactly. that? Exactly. Shout to you, the cop at work that I yelled at last week. Come at me. <laughs> I had to shave my mustache recently, so I have lost a lot of power. I fucked up shaving my mustache. Anyway, we're moving on now to... It's been... <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. It's my doing... job. Yes, it is. Wait, would you like to modulate your own voice? You could do so. Um, this reaches all the way. <laughs> Let's see. Speaking of beware the handsome stranger. <laughs> this thing is unpredictable and uh circuits. Many circuits operating at once. <laughs> uh, circuit. Circuit board. Beep beep bop bop. My mother was a computer. My father was a shoe salesman. <laughs> he sold the shoes on Amazon.com. That is where they met. You all better repent! Because the kingdom of heaven is at hand! Is that Pete Buddha Judge? <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I'm turning you down. I'm turning Topic you down. number two, 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 two. two. Alright. That's you, but I'm fucking up the delay for you guys. <laughs> this is the brand. I right. love it. My topic, it's only going to work if we're all staunch critis, critics <laughs> of God. Yeah, mm. that bastard. Okay. Why, why'd you make me, you stupid bastard? <laughs> now I'm so powerful, I'll kill you and become you. 
No, the question is, um, or the topic is, the most spiritual or religious thing that you do or believe, despite being an atheist agnostic. Ah, uh, yes. Brendan. Oh, man, that's a tough question. I really hate spiritualism. <laughs> <laughs> well, what about, well, like, I was thinking of an I'm, gonna, I'm the Andy of this topic. <laughs> <laughs> what? Where Maybe this I isn't spiritual, know. but somebody told me everything happens for a reason. I thought, no, it doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> That's, I mean, that is an ideology when you come behind it, like, that everything happens for a reason. It's like, yeah, it it, it kind of does, but the reasons aren't, like, cool. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The so, reasons are just, like, you were there. <laughs> yeah. Like, everything happens for a reason. Zach fell down and hurt his arm really bad today. Uh, the why did that happen? Is drugs. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, the reason is because of fucking Troy's infrastructure. So I'm coming at you, Mayor... And- Madden. Quimby? Oh, sorry. Quimby? I don't know. <laughs> Sound right. Sound like a politician's name. I'm like way, um, like, it, we're into this than I think. I have like let little bits of this stuff slip with you guys, but like, like I'm not, like I was raised Catholic, but like, you know, you know how, how it do. You, how it you know, do. You know how stuff just kind of doesn't make sense, especially with the pedophilia. Yeah, and a lot that. of, a lot of atheists were raised Catholic. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, like, I don't, I'm not like hostile towards religion. Like, I'm not one of those guys. No, no, me either. I was kidding with that one. Yeah, yeah. I um, mean, well, no, I'm hostile towards Yeah, religion. I know, I know that about you. <laughs> um, but like, I'm like pretty, pretty freaky deaky. I got some weird beliefs. So you guys talk about yours and I'll see where this is a tough topic. No one wants to go. Oh, I'll, I'll, I'll talk. I, <laughs> no, uh, okay. I mean, like, you know, it's like, a, I like Satanism's a good one mm-hmm. uh, as far as an ideology to think about. Uh, I'm not like fully in the pale for like anything. I think that that's part of my, like milieu, you know, yeah. um, I think that that's like a, you know, it's maybe a little cynical, but it's also kind of a good, I mean, that's like, oh boy. Okay. Uh, so like the occult, <laughs> uh, the, uh, the occult is all about pairing different ideologies together and using the best parts of them. If it doesn't serve you, discard it. If it does serve you, then you keep it. Mm. Um, so like, I'm very into that kind of idea, ide, um, ideology. I've said that like four times now. Uh, I'm trying not to sound dumb, guys. I'm really trying. I already said I like fish, and now I'm gonna be like, oh, I totally am like into like witchy shit. It's like, been fuck yeah. Uh, <laughs> once again, uh, and that's great, Brendan, because that brings uh, childhood memory to my head. Because that was the one, uh, the song that I liked the best when I was in kindergarten. So, but yeah, I, I don't know. Like, I, I like, uh, I like, I don't believe. See, the thing is, I like, I don't believe in a lot of shit, but I'm also interested in seeing if any of it makes sense to me. Like ghosts, for example, Mm -hmm. I don't believe in ghosts, but I also have never seen a ghost or had any ghost shit happen to me. Probably because they don't exist. That's see, that is an open possibility that I'm holding. (laughs) But but if I saw a ghost, I wouldn't be like, that's not a ghost. Mm -hmm. You know, I'd be like, believe it if you saw it. Yeah, I'd be like, that's fucking what's his face, Patrick Swayze, (laughs) and he's behind me. And look at this beautiful vase that we made with our love. Pause. Boss, boss, no, whatever. No. Yeah, I'm not gonna fucking take tips from you. <laughs> okay, fucking, you believe in nothing, you fucking nihilist, Pete Buttigieg ass motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> um, what do I? Hey, about the you? color of our democracy. The color is the of rainbow plus freedom. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the color of our right. democracy is undeniably white, Pete Buttigieg. <laughs> Um, Dude, that fucking guy, I swear to God, I'll punch him. Hey, if we add up all of our hopes and dreams, they will subtract our fears. (laughs) He didn't say that, right? (laughs) No, he could have, though. Okay, he could (laughs) have. Really? That was good. (laughs) That was a good one. (laughs) All right, Zach, bear your soul. Tell me something. What do you believe Um, in? Vampires, Draculas. I didn't have an idea prepared when I thought of the topic, but now I think about it, I read a book that where the author was Buddhist and he kind of convinced me that his ideas made sense, which was surprising to me because yeah. I'm not reli- not religious or spiritual at all. But the main idea that made sense to me was kind of druggy and tripped out. So maybe that's why I believed it. But he's basically said that like, you know, dreaming is just another plane of reality, mm-hmm. something like that. Sure. It's like and a place that you go. Yeah. More or less. Yeah. yeah. And it just made me think of shit differently. So that is sort of spiritual in a way. It's Absolutely. at least outside of the realm of reality. Brendan, tell us something that you're oogie boogie about. I'm not oogie boogie about anything. Man. Do you believe in remote viewing? No. Do you believe in psychics? No. Do you, have you ever seen had a coincidence happen to you, and you're just like, that's not a coincidence, that's synchronicity. No. Uh, all right. 
I uh, I don't know. There's a, and then there's also like weird little biological things that we don't understand. Yeah, for sure. That, like I I just I keep thinking of this one. Um, I don't even know what the fuck it's from, so it could be completely made up. But maybe, <laughs> maybe this was real. That I there was a video of like people walking in like I don't know Times Square or something, and when uh-huh. they would cross each other's paths, their feet like their stepping pattern would match up to okay. each other, and that's less, I mean just like social shit. But um, well, I I get really like turned on by that kind of stuff. Not sexually, calm down. I do. Um, yeah, I don't know. But- feet just came up, and suddenly you're. <laughs> Did I mention my favorite director is Quentin? <laughs> um, no, but Not like that guy I, from Nickelodeon. <laughs> <laughs> um, I really like that kind of stuff. Like synchronicity is very cool to me. Um, human. I think that you don't have to believe in like capital G God to believe that there is a connection between people, even on like a, like a social level. Yeah. There are many spheres to this thing. And I think that really demystifying the mystical is one of like the things that I think is very like important in all that thing, I like, you know, I, I'm sure this is not a revolutionary like sentence, but like magic, the idea of magic is a lot of magic. Things that were considered magic are just science nowadays, mm-hmm. you know, like fucking making fire, fucking, you know, doing fucking magic tricks, like literal, like illusion magic tricks are just science. I mean, a lot of them are just science tricks. Mm-hmm. And I, I find that magic being the, uh, the concept of magic and they're all paranormal things being, like undiscovered science, some of it is going to be discarded along the way, but some of it may be real, and that's something nope. like that I always find. But like, what do you? What evidence <laughs> nope. do you have? This is where this is where I get upset about that kind of stuff because I'm a skeptic, but I'm I'm, a, I'm also science minded person. But like to discard that without having any, there's no you can't. The absence of evidence is not the evidence of absence. That's right? not true. That's it. That is true. No, the absence of evidence in a situation where you would otherwise expect the evidence to be is evidence of absence. But there are always outside factors. If I, if you say I'm home and I come home and I don't see you anywhere, I'm in the that closet. That is evidence that you are not home. That's not evidence that I'm not home. You didn't check everywhere. You don't know where I'm, I'm in the closet. Are you trapped in the closet? Yeah. Pull that one. Fucking, I'm fucking R. Kelly. Baby. That's a clip I need on the soundboard. I <laughs> actually, I app. never watched that shit because like. Uh, South Park did that episode, and then I watched it. It's funnier you know, than that, South Park. That's oh, my way religion. Funnier. My religion yeah. is that R. Kelly's. It's just that so series opera. of videos. Yeah, that's the one with fire, the midget. Man. I mean, yeah, the, oh, yeah, that's classic. Next level. Um, classic. I will I think say that's this. what you and I bonded on very Was first it? meeting. Probably, that's great. yeah. <laughs> Pull out my gun. This is not good for my heart. <laughs> um, I think I. So I don't like spirituality. Um, I don't like because I don't know what the fuck spirituality means. But yeah, well, I was going to ask first, like, if you guys think there's a difference between spirituality and religion. I don't know. I mean, yes, there is a difference. Like, well, but... religion, I think it's pretty easy to to have a detest to detest religion. Religion right? has a worship component, I think, or like at least it's a uh, spiritualism doesn't necessarily have to be about a higher thing. No, I agree. But with I think that. religion is primarily about a higher thing. There's it's also about stuff higher in between, too. like Buddhism. Falls somewhere that is interesting yeah one one involves authority mm-hmm. yeah i mean even if it does like you could say i'm a deist and that is a religious pronouncement don't necessarily a deist would necessarily believe that god is uh an authority just mm-hmm. that god made shit but it's still a belief that there is something uh transcendent in the universe yeah that is greater than like human beings or other living things mm-hmm. um spiritualism i don't think necessitates that you just say well i don't think there's a god but i think there's you know but I do think we have like some kind of like energy or mm-hmm. chi, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Yeah, uh, it's also not true. But <laughs> well, that's kind of what I was going with with the question, like you know, weird little extra. So I, I don't, I don't things. I don't believe in any of that shit. But, yeah. Um, but I, I think that um, what a lot of people, the place that spirituality plays, where it fits into a lot of people's lives, um, I definitely think that for me, something that fits in to my life in that way is um, I I definitely have a strong um, uh, view of like the interconnectedness of all things. And I think that there is a lot of uh, value to be gained from um, the recognition of how temporary life is and, you know, that kind of stuff. But that's it. Ultimately, once you take out the paranormal supernatural aspects of it, that's just kind of just 
personal philosophy. But mm. that, see, and that is where I think that, I mean, I, I think that we, we're coming together a very spiritual way here because <laughs> we're, we're bringing together, we're finding that we're not actually arguing, but we're, we're, indeed, we're agreeing. Should we hold hands? We should hold hands in prayer. Come on. Nope. In the name of Jesus Christ. Come on. Jesus Christ. <laughs> Jesus Christmas, Obama, I, don't know, I feel like I'm going to grab your hand and you're going to start. You're going to just start talking Mormon stuff or something. <laughs> no, I'm not a Mormon dog. Keep it. I don't know. There's a big baby. Mormon population in Lebanon. It's, no, there's not. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's the Mormonites. No, That's what they're called right. No, America. <laughs> yeah, Mormonite Catholics. Um, okay, so what I was going to say um, is that, like, my view on spirituality is that it's not that fucking crazy. It's not that exciting, and it's not that crazy. And I think that demystifying it actually. It, it gives it more, it's just a thing that you live with in your everyday life and you don't see it. Like, for example, uh, like, do you think about how reading is a synesthetic experience? You are looking at symbols, symbols, ooh, mm. symbols. <laughs> You're looking at symbols and it's, in, it's creating a uh, conscious universe in your mind. That is, in, it, in and of itself, by definition, a magical experience. Process. That's not magical. It is magic. No, it's you You're know using, better than anybody you that are, that is just a natural but process. What, but I, let's define terms then. Magic is the manipulation of consciousness through symbols, archetypes, and images. You're getting well, that's a you're, different you're, definition you're getting then. Real <laughs> close to the ICP song. <laughs> <laughs> Listen, baby. I see. I got nothing bad to say about the juggle. Everything's the magic if you want it to be. It fucking <laughs> is. It is so fucking mind blowing to just be a person and be on the world. Like, do you know how fucking Love random it. this shit is? Like, it's not like, oh, I'm not like other girls random. It's like actually fucking <laughs> random. Like there, there is a, such a small chance that we are even in this room together as human beings, but just also our fucking cells and atoms being assembled in the way that they are. Mm. I mean, the complexity of the human brain, the way that we can create worlds inside. I mean, literally, your life is a, is a hallucination of, like, the the quote-unquote physical world around you. There's no evidence that you're actually here. There's no evidence that the things that are going on around you are actually happening. And that kind of lends to the idea. What I was originally talking about with that book. That book, by the way, is The Snow Leopard. Or this, yeah, The Snow Leopard by Peter Matheson. And, uh, Come on the podcast. Shout out. <laughs> <laughs> um that yeah like what you experience in the waking world necessarily isn't 100 percent reality no it's not not in any way um and like the the thing that i always think that's interesting like one of the things like interconnectedness between people you know there are many levels to think of it and it's it's where you cross into these areas of spirituality where people get queasy but it's like okay so have you ever had the experience where you think about somebody and then they call you on your cell phone yeah that's a, that's pretty com that's like very common actually very common yeah and the internet has created a new level is I think is physicalized a lot of the um, non-physical parts of our like consciousness as a people. Because when you think about like even pop culture is a shared consciousness. Mm. Like we we're talking about boards of Canada in our minds separately. We're all we all have a mental model of what boards of Canada is and mm -hmm. the feeling that it was the textures, the colors that go along with that. Putting that all together is a sh like we're living outside in our heads separately sitting in a room across the table from each mm -hmm. other we are there's a universe being created generated around inside of our like conscious space uh can we be sure that we all have the same that us three see boards of canada or feel the same way about it though or do does you, that not even matter doesn't matter but do you see the same color blue as me i'm freaking out man no i see you, i think i need to take <laughs> i need to take a minute just to, just to sit down listen to some fucking dub techno <laughs> calm down <laughs> Magic everywhere I got bitch. no problem with the <laughs> once again. I don't Magic listen to, everywhere. I don't listen to bitch. ICP, but I would never be ashamed to say that I did. Um, here's my problem: you don't need magic and supernatural bullshit for any of that. But you don't need to not have it either. Like it's, that, it's I, not. It it adds no explanatory power or value. I to actually any agree other. with Brendan on that point. I mean, I agree that religion and spirituality has been used to lead a lot of people astray. And I think that that's like a point that everyone agrees I think on by its generally. nature it leads you astray because it's you're adding explanatory or valued things into stuff that where it's not necessary. But I would argue, even from a scientific perspective, I would say that the material science um, view of the world is also limited. 
Um, and that's why I, once again, going back to what I said about the occult and not keeping yourself confined into single ideologies, both ideologies have their uh, benefits and both have their downfalls. What is the benefit of believing in things for which there is no good evidence? It is letting go and giving yourself the possibility to see evidence that you would otherwise ignore. I don't need to invent an uh, aspect of reality that we have no evidence for in order to believe that there can that there are things to learn. But it's not inventing, and that that's the thing that I think would would be uh, an error to to believe that you're inventing these things. And Do we have any evidence that anything supernatural has ever existed? I mean. In some ways, yeah. I mean, there's a lot of like weird what? shit out there. Like, but that's not evidence that supernatural things exist. That would be a logical fallacy. Well, I guess. Don't make I me mean, go full atheist and start talking about logical fallacies. <laughs> I mean, fallacies. okay, dude. Yeah, I get it. Nothing unnatural can happen. But that's my point with spirituality is it's not that fucking weird. It's not unnatural. It's just shit that we don't have the eyes to see. That assumes that it, it that there is some basis but to you believe that any of it exists. But the point that I'm saying is like you don't have to have the image in your mind and then find evidence to find that. That's a bad kind of spirituality. What I'm saying is being open to the idea that these things may exist, may or may not exist, and that you may encounter them in a weird way and not really understand what's happening is like that is a way to keep yourself from getting ground into that materialistic hole. Because there are so many ways that material science has failed us. But I don't believe that that... So you're... I mean, when you say materialism, you're talking about naturalism. And... Well, I'm, I'm talking about, like, material science. Like, saying that you have to have, a, like... You have to have a, a reading on a dial for something to be... Yeah. There. Yeah. Um, yeah, that is how the real world works. <laughs> is that things which exist are detectable. But n not always, right? So we have, like, things like quantum physics, for example. Yeah. Like, you have the fucking... Um, the split beam experiment right you have yeah but that doesn't say what a lot of people think it says no but well, what things it, can be not yet detectable too right and we yeah. don't have sure. the tools to and the right to time them. to believe in those things is when evidence is presented that they exist yeah but you have to understand that that evidence comes from people looking beyond the evidence that we have at the moment like they you know they drew maps with fucking you know uh ice walls around them and or that that's flat earth but like you know fucking the here be monster shit. do you like, know the invisible know dragon the, thing no Tell okay. me about the invisible dragon. I tell you, um, I have a dragon at home. Okay. And then you say, well, well, can I see him? No, he's invisible. Oh, well, can I touch him? No, he, you, when you go to, he, he's, he's incorporeal. This and, is still, but this is still describing the type of the spiritualism that I don't, I'm not endorsing. So like, well, I'm not saying that you, you make up a, a, a invisible dragon and then you, then that invisible dragon exists just because you insist it exists. But it's the, it's the same thing. You're saying the we don't need evidence to presume that something is there. No, what I'm saying is that this uh, looking for evidence in places where it's not going to appear uh, uh, detectable in the way that you think it is, it leaves you away from it, it leads you away from things that are actually there. Walk me through the steps of the scientific method. Wait, Brandon, did you give the your most... The scientific method is not perfect. Hmm? Did you give your most spiritual thing yet? Yeah. I did. What's that? That fuck spirituality. Oh, no, I come said... come on. I said I, I... I... The role that spiritualism fills in a lot of people's lives, I think, can be better filled by non-spiritualism. That is uh, not your most spiritual thing yeah, to believe. Yeah, you're what the you're fuck? I don't believe. I don't believe in anything supernatural, period, full stop, at all. What about piss? Uh, Where's pee stored? I'm trying to blow your mind here. What about uh, random number generators and how they are influenced by human consciousness just being around them? Because they're not. But they are. No, they're not. Yes, they are. Nope. This is, docu this is documented fact, my friend. I don't need whatever weird blue book shit. It's here. not blue book. <laughs> Bloomberg. Uh, <laughs> But no, I mean, it, it, like, I, I respect, like, the, the atheist um, viewpoint. I just think that it's it's very limited. It's one philosophy. And I think that you should never pigeonhole yourself into one philosophy. I don't think it's a philosophy. It's just the real world versus fantasy. But that would be the atheist philosophy, right? Is that Well, I don't think atheism world? simply is I, I don't believe that a God exists. Right. Like, so that doesn't, there are certainly things that can cascade out of that, but you can't package a philosophy into that it's just one at one statement on one thing right but you understand what I, what i'm saying is okay if, if we can expand the definition to materialism material science uh um whatever 
methodological methodological naturalism sure. is what it's called. Anyway, my point being that I think that that is very limiting. the The scientific method leads you away. There are so many ways that it fails. There, it, it's it is rigorous, but the reason why it works and produces the results that it produces is because it's rigorous, but it's often too rigorous. Sure, but you like you don't need to make things up. <laughs> but it's not about making things up. It's about it's about observation. See, I look at spiritualism from a scientific perspective. But there's no observation of anything supernatural. But you'd be surprised what people observe. Like th- this yeah, is people the point. Definitely observe supernatural shit all the time. They believe it as can clear you, as fucking day. Can you name one thing that has ever been observed and turned out to have a supernatural cause? But you're well, saying I'm, like <laughs> <laughs> the point well, that you're I'm, s- I'm talking about people observing things. Now I'm not not talking about like scientific method observation. But about like people like genuinely believe in that they saw a ghost yeah, or something. Yeah, people believe a lot of shit that's not true. <laughs> but what about, like, the point that I'm trying to make is, like, what about fucking people's consciousness? You'll never figure out people's consciousness if you don't let go of materialism to some extent. Consciousness is an emergent property of minds. Of that brains. is a debatable question. and there's, It's certainly debatable. There is no evidence for that, just as there's no evidence for any of the things there's that we... There's plenty of evidence that, that is consciousness no evidence. only arises from physical brains. That's not true, though. The, can you give me an example of consciousness arising from a non-physical source? Consciousness is a concept that's defined by humans in a Yuck. chauvinist way toward our own. Can you self. tell me where the consciousness is that does not have its root in a physical process? How okay? Here, how about the Earth? The Earth could have a consciousness. We wouldn't be. Yeah, aware but that's of a that. could. I'm talking about does. Whoa! This mean, is my this is my point <laughs> behind it, is that it's not easy to. It's very easy to brush it away and say, I'm smarter than this. I, I know what I'm doing here. But it's not, it's so much harder to be like, there is a, totally the possibility. This is what, what I'm talking about, like, with the scientific approach to spirituality is that, like, to say that there's no other consciousness besides human consciousness. Oh, I didn't say there's no other consciousness besides human consciousness. I said it arises from but a brain, from a physical process. But from that's, a, a but brain or a similar. There's a completely. So what? What is a? What are you saying with that? That spirituality has to be immaterial. I'm saying that we have ample evidence that there that your entire being comes from your brain. But there. But that's not true mm-hmm. though, because there are studies that show that there are like you store memories outside of your brain. No, yeah, but you know it from your nervous system. Does but it's not it you know beyond the nervous system. There are ways to. It's store... It's a physical process that's part of your being your body it's not some ephemeral ethereal it just spirit as e- it just as easily consciousness could just as easily well, then why aren't our computers conscious right why aren't they or yeah why, why are, are not why are computers not consciousness well computers don't have nearly the processing power of the human brain yeah but they have the processing power of like an ant they actually really don't and they probably do they're pretty on, shitty. And also, I mean, hmm. there's a that kind of starts depending how you define consciousness. What is the role of sentience? What's the role of sapience? At what point is something conscious or not? Right. But then you're just playing word games. You're not actually talking about whether things are, uh, what the reality of something is. You're just trying to figure out your own definitions for things but that living in a concept, living in a conceptual world, like having the idea that like, for example, the, the idea that the earth is one organism versus thinking that we're all these atomized organisms. That's just definitions. But definitions are mind maps and they are thought models. Like it's not to to pigeonhole yourself into um one way of thinking and thinking that you like okay so a person is this it's this shape and it's that shape and it's you know it has these definitional parts. It's not the same as saying okay if you look at this from this perspective, shifting perspectives and looking at different evidence in different ways, you see different things. That's the point that I'm trying to say. Like, Yeah, but the you could take a stance. You could look at things from the position of that the only living thing is the cell and every human being is actually a collection of billions and billions and billions of living things and not an independent living thing. Yeah. But it's you're t- not actually changing what is you're just changing the way that you talk about it and describe it but what about okay how about your consciousness being affected by the microbiome in your gut okay it's still how does that change your consciousness being an emergent property of your it's still an emergent property of a physical process there's no evidence that any consciousness has ever existed beyond a physical process there's no evidence that like if you take the brain out there's still consciousness 
but that wouldn't so the 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 model that i'm thinking of that, uh, to counter the um emergent uh origin of consciousness model that you're putting forward this is getting very heady um <laughs> is in uh a basically your mind being more like a radio uh, dish and yes you have a brain that can coordinates your movements makes your you know blood pump and shit but then what makes you a person is something that comes from outside of you. no that's in your brain too we have ample evidence of that and you know we have ample evidence no, of that we don't you know phineas gage you know all this but that shit. doesn't mean that's personality that's not what consciousness is. See, that's this is the reason why it gets very fucking weird with consciousness. Is if you if you clamp it down and say consciousness is the way the person acts and how they feel on the inside, that's not consciousness. Like consciousness is the is the being. The yeah, but you know this shit better than I do. But the the while it's debatable, the whole idea of consciousness being an emergent property is is like it's debatable. It's ultimately a game of definitions. But it's not a game of definition because where Conscious, does consciousness from live? The, where the does be, it live? The best, so the best explanation it seems to me that we currently have is that consciousness is is more or less just an illusion. Explain. It's just it's just something that we it's something that gets created by. Um, having our like brain processes yeah. and stuff like that and cognition so consciousness is spiritual like thanks for i mean <laughs> the thought experiment of the teleporter or the clone that happens you know okay that, like you know if there's a device that could teleport you but uh-huh. the way that teleports you is it dematerializes you and materializes you somewhere are you the else. same person man, man are you man, the same man? person man say it are you the same person man man thank you are you the in same sp- person bro there you go now we're getting spiritual (laughs) you know are you the same person as uh as the one that got dematerialized absolutely your consciousness will seem to you the whole universe could have been created 30 seconds ago Mm -hmm. and to us it feels like our consciousness has been existing forever you could you could freeze theoretically freeze somebody and unfreeze them Mm -hmm. and to them it would seem as though no time has passed their consciousness would stop as soon as the the chemicals and the electrons in their brain stop moving around one thing that i would say is that i think that consciousness in and of itself is an illusory or is a uh it's very hard to measure we'll never we may we may never be able to really measure it and put yeah. it on paper oh that's because i i don't think it's real in that sense like consciousness is not something you're going to be able to put into an equation. Mm. I can I it can seem, agree with when that. I, that's that's mostly what I mean when I say an emergent property. It's just yeah, no, I I know what you're saying yeah. by that. You're saying that you turn the brain on, the consciousness starts. You, you it's turn the something brain that off, happens once brains uh, reach a certain level of development. Just like a object does not be, it becomes wet when it has a certain amount of water on it. Yeah, I mean I I get is that, that perspective. not quantifiable. It's not. When is something dry and when is something wet? Fish is wet. My scalp is dry. <laughs> DJ psoriasis. So, you know, the but the point is that there is no... There is a lot to be gained. Here, This is why I don't like the word spiritual. Because there's a lot to be gained from having um, both deeper and broader views of humans and our roles and the way we interact with each other and our place on the planet or our place in the universe looking at whether we should look at the planet as a singular organism and all the life on it as just organs of that organism. These are all interesting questions about the way that we should approach and view things. You don't need spiritualism or supernatural anything for any of that. All of that can be done in a materialistic view of the world. As long as you maintain an open mind on top of that materialism. The problem that I have is that materialism has served a lot of the times to to restrict the view and the perspective, which I think is, is something to not be ignored. Um, but you know, I love you guys so much and I'm so glad we had this talk. <laughs> I'm um, sorry. I brought it up. It's been- <laughs> we just got friggin' deep, man. Everyone says that podcasts are dumb, but podcasts are cool. Yeah. Because the kingdom of fuck is that <laughs> there's a video we'll show it to you later brendan's a, um in a very uh very into it lately it's a yeah. lady in, yelling in walmart basically i'm an explorer exactly i'm a psychonaut i go deep into my mind on that note we're moving on now to topic 
sound I've ever heard. That's you, bro. <laughs> Topic number <laughs> three. <laughs> Beautiful. <laughs> All right, guys. Uh, let's topic. make this topic quick. <laughs> All right. Uh, you know it's not good to talk about religion. You know it's better to talk about politics. Yes. <laughs> All right. Uh, I'm, I've been watching this primary season, and um, I'm getting real fucking tired of seeing oh, all Pete. these. Pete! Uh, yeah, exactly. Sick of this fucking guy, man. I'm tired of Pete Buttigieg acting like he's supposed to be on that stage. And you know what? There's only one president. I'm a pioneer! Is. Damn right. I guess. I don't know. I don't trust that man. <laughs> <laughs> but I, you know, there's only one fucking president. As, as much as the New York Times likes to think that you can have two presidents... As long as they, you know, they, they love making women share bylines, so they made two endorsements. Um, we got to find these fuckers new jobs, because they're going down. Uh, Zach, do you like Bernie Sanders? It's the only one, man. Thank it's the God. Only one okay, this is going to be about. way yeah, could have gone poorly. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, just Pete. like Trump train. <laughs> Honestly, dude, I'd rather have a Trump person than a Pete person. Uh, yeah, for sure. I, I just keep going with the default that everyone likes Bernie, because if you don't, you're really a fucking idiot. Oh, yeah. Like, certainly. Like, like, absolutely stupid. Can't do math if you don't like Bernie. Yeah. You really just, you just hate yourself. And that reminds me of, uh, I saw a post where somebody was like, I don't understand why it's so hard for socialists to do math. 100 times 365 is 365,000. <laughs> Like, nope. <laughs> what is that in reference to? I don't even know what it was You're in reference to. You're paying $100 a day for yeah, a year? Yeah, like, three hundred sixty-five. I was like, that's $365,000. <laughs> Why don't you guys, what are you social to do math? Oh, boy. Okay, so let, let's, okay, obviously Bernie will be the president of the United States yeah. of America, and who knows, maybe he'll dissolve the whole thing and we'll try something else, you know? Yeah. Maybe we'll do that instead. Anyway, we got to give these motherfuckers jobs, and I think that we, we, we three, after getting all deep, on uh, religion and uh, and talking about guilty pleasures, let's get these fuckers jobs. So let's let's go down the list. Um, let's talk about uh, Joseph Raisinette Biden Jr. That guy, know. Joseph Raisinette Biden. He's been retired since like 1940. Robinette, sorry. <laughs> So we need a new job for new him? New job for Joe. Oh, that's easy. Lifeguard. Lifeguard. That's a great one. <laughs> that's fantastic. And that would go with what I thought for him, which would be open an ice cream shop. Everyone yeah. loves watching Joe Biden eat ice cream. Why not <laughs> to make it into a fucking gig? You know? Daycare is another good option for yeah. him. Daycare? Well, you'd re t trust him around your kids? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> not yeah. around mine. Around Pete Buttigieg. Ah, uh, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. Oh, we should put him in daycare. He's tired. <laughs> the man needs a nap. Yeah, I, I think he needs to go back to being a lifeguard. And when you ever hear, you know, you come up, you go to the pool, you know, you you put some water on my legs. Yeah, I had long, long blonde hair. You put water on my legs. You guys remember how you used to put water on my legs. And then the hair would pop back up, and then Corn Pop come around. He'd, um, uh, he'd come out and pull out. He was a bad dude, I'll tell you what. No, uh, okay, that's my time. Yeah. That's a brain falling apart. Oh, certainly. <laughs> Joe Biden's consciousness, the radio dish inside his head that's transmitting the consciousness, because it's not an emergency property, is just falling apart and he's getting static. That's what's happening. All right. How about um, Peter, Paul, and Mary Montgomery Bujajaj? What does this man do? Is it the job that he should have? Like the job the I want him the to CIA have? The CIA operative that he is? Like, what, what are we talking about? Is it the job that makes most sense? Or is it just like the job I think he should have? It just like for his skill set. Use car salesman. Use car salesman. No. He is that scummy. He's that scummy, but I feel like he's got the heartstrings. You know, he really does know how to pull like dumb middle-aged like white people's heartstrings. Real estate agent. Real estate. This car runs the way that our colors never run. <laughs> <laughs> when we think about the shape of a Civic, <laughs> it determines the airbag, the, the, how the airbags deploy, and everything else in our democracy. If we can light up this Civic, we can light up the whole lot. If we can light up the whole lot, we can light up the whole town. You know, Pete Buttigieg would make an okay magician. Oh, I got it. 
Obama impersonator. There oh, you go. Okay. Get him on time in Times Square. <laughs> <laughs> Let me be clear. I uh, didn't do so well in Iowa, uh, despite what people, everyone thinks. The uh, one thing I will say about Pete Buttigieg is if he's elected, Trump is going to say some really funny shit about him. <laughs> oh, for sure. <laughs> Can you imagine those debates? Oh, my God. Uh, it's going to be terrible, man. And everyone's going to side with Trump. It would be a first well, it's just because, bloodbath. It's just because Buttigieg has such a swirly face. You just want to fucking give him a swirly. You want to give him a fucking <laughs> knuckle sandwich. I, I will I will always maintain that while SNL is not funny anymore, they they, they had the best Pete Buttigieg joke. Is it Colin Jost? Yeah, it's when he walks out with his arms up, and he's mm. uh, I'm keeping my arms up because they didn't teach me what to do with them at Harvard. <laughs> <laughs> Colin Jost sucks ass. He um, does, but that... Uh, yeah, I, I, also, I'll is give... He, is he, like, decent... married to Scarlett Johansson now? Yeah, they both... <laughs> They suck. Fuck them. Um, I, yeah, I think Obama impersonator is the Obama best impersonator job for him. is fantastic because that's pretty much his job right now. Did you see his lifts and his shoes at the debates? Oh, Jesus really? Christ! Oh yeah, my man's wearing like twelve inch heels. It's crazy. <laughs> um, he's truly just trying to be Obama. He lowers his voice like that lady from uh, what is it? The Cure? Not the Cure. That's a band. Uh, the uh, Elizabeth Olsen. The lady who had the the blood test thing that she was supposed to be able to do a blood test with the is the HBO. Whatever. Not important. If we climb the mountain of freedom, oh, yeah. Yeah, then you know the rock about? slide of fascism will fall to the side. Listen, Bernie makes a lot of points. You know, he says that he wants <laughs> uh, he wants universal health care. But I want to give uh, I want to do I don't want to do Medicare for all. I want to do Medicare for all lives matter. It's <laughs> oh. <laughs> kind of not my joke, but that's fine. I had a feeling I was like, there's no way nobody said that before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a Twitter. That's a Twitter, baby. Oh, Elizabeth Ann Warren. What? 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 Bernie's friend. Bernie's friend. <laughs> Bernie's mortal enemy, honestly. Yeah, now, man. Jesus. Uh, I, I still think she could work a, at Ancestry.com. I think she would. Uh, <laughs> I think she'd be a fine college professor. She'd be a great college professor. She should not mm. be a politician. She, I mean, she for. for Let's bring her down to advisor. <laughs> <laughs> Let's give her a uh, advisor. Yeah. Let's 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 give her as little responsibility as possible. I mean, the thing about Elizabeth Warren, I is, would be fine with her in like a cabinet position or she something. She probably will. Yeah. That's probably what will happen. Um, I wouldn't even be opposed to I wouldn't if he wants to pick her for VP, that would be fine. Yeah. I wouldn't but hate like, it. I don't think VP has as big an impact as people actually. No, like VP's does, kind of a punishment position. B VP is either neutral or or bad for you. Yes. Th those are the only two modes. There's no like, oh, I picked this VP, now I win the election. That's not how it mm. works. If I, mean, I pick this VP, now I don't lose the election. What are you talking about? Joe Biden's dude. Great, baby. <laughs> oh, Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. Sleepy Joe. God, Getting I all wish the I, claps. I wish I had the nickname game that Trump has. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. It's just, uh, Elizabeth Warren should just... I'd just like her to be, be a college professor. Please tell me we're doing Klobuchar next. You know she's next on my list. Oh, I think is this is in order of the about. polls. Uh, Amy Jean Klobuchar. Enforcer for a bookie. Okay. I was going to say she should be an MMA. <laughs> yeah, something like that. Because uh, she throws staplers like you wouldn't believe. That could be her move. The stapler. <laughs> it's like she, WWF. She's trying really hard on this comedy shit. Probably should just throw her on SNL. Oh, I know. <laughs> what was? Did you watch the debate uh, yeah. yesterday? The fucking moment where Joe Biden was like, he was like, everybody's going out over time. I'm not going over time. And they were like, oh, Joe, you're so good. And then like there was like like 10 seconds of her just smiling at Joe Biden. Be like, <laughs> we're all having a great time up here. <laughs> What the fuck was that? I, I don't know, but that one, there was one weird spot where they like asked her a question. Then they were like, why are you answering that? I, I, <laughs> I want Bernie Sanders to be president and just hire her to stand behind him and crack her knuckles. <laughs> like the Obama anger impersonator. Yeah, that's exactly deal. what Amy Klobuchar should do. I re like, honestly, if Amy Klobuchar had the right policy positions. I don't hate her I would be, personality. She's fine. No, I would be like torn. Yeah. That's how much I like that her just like weird fuck you attitude toward everything. Yeah. If unfortunately her policy positions suck, they're they feel more. For, I don't feel like her policy positions are like focus grouped. I no, feel like her policy no, positions no, are like no, this no. is what Amy Klobuchar thinks about shit. Yeah. Like absolutely. I feel like there's a genuineness to her, mm. and I I like she's genuinely pissed off. Yeah. And, she's just, and mad and will genuinely genuinely flatten Pete Buttigieg if he says another goddamn word to her. Yeah. And I love it. 
I, I that, that clip of uh, from, from her at all. Yeah, that, that you don't think so? No. Oh, wait, you, she's like famous she... for being abusive to her staff. Oh, like, I on the that. real, yeah, she throws staplers, she throws iPads. She one time ate uh, her salad with a comb because they didn't have a fork for her. <laughs> um, she's she's just a joy. I love her. <laughs> yeah, she's great. That clip of uh, Chapo when they go up to her and they're like, uh, Oh, I miss that. Yeah, there's. A oh yeah, yeah. No, I. I yeah, didn't hear they're that. like they're like, hey, we're here with a different candidate, and they must wear like Bernie pins or something. Yeah. And she's like, I see that. And then they're like, we just wanted to say thanks for uh, bodying Pete Buttigieg in the debate. <laughs> and she's like, oh, you're welcome. Like, she's not even like, oh, you know, a lot of politicians would be like, oh, friend. you know, she's like, oh, OK, thanks. <laughs> and, and then uh, I forgot. So one of the other guys said, um, uh, like, like you show that rat or something like that. And she just yeah. laughs. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think it was probably like Matt Christman or something. Yeah, that was It was fantastic. great. Yeah. OK. You know, it's time. Tommy come lately. Tom. Fahar Steyer. <laughs> Fahar? F-A-H-R. Fahar? Really? Fahar. Oh. Fahar. Fahar, matey. Tommy come lately. That's Joe Biden. He has a Joe, job already, probably. <laughs> he's got so many jobs. Uh, he's probably just going to be the next... He'll probably be to try out for Jeff Bezos' position after this, right? <laughs> he's just such a strange man. He's the billionaire for Bernie, I guess. Yeah, I was surprised to hear what he was saying yesterday. Yeah, he usually kicks ass. He he did come for Bernie on something yesterday, and I was like, don't you fuck Dare Steyer. Mm. <laughs> Do you know what you're playing He's with He's going to drop here? out and endorse Bernie at some he point. He fucking yeah. better. Yeah. He I, if he has a poor showing in South Carolina, I think there's a chance he drops out before Tuesday and endorses Bernie. Yeah. The, but my favorite moment of the entire campaign so far is a fantastic is moment. when Warren and, and Biden are getting into it. No, or sorry, and Warren and Bernie are getting into it after the one debate. And she's like, hey, you called me a liar. I think you called me a liar then, on national television. And then <laughs> Steyer walks up and she's like, I, I don't want to interrupt. I just want to say hi to Bernie. Oh, okay. <laughs> No, he says, he, he good. says okay, good. Yeah. no, he says, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> yeah, okay, good. I love my Brooklyn Jew president so much. Yeah, okay, good. That is the energy I wish to exude every minute oh, of so every good. day. Oh, my God, it's so that beautiful. That is amazing. That's that, true. That was almost rivaled last night by, really? Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> when people started booing him, yeah. really? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, Bernie smelled a rat in the room uh, the second it came up. Um, yeah, I, I think that um, Steyer man, I, I think he just should retire. Just he, um, I found out this start reason, a foundation, go retire. He draws a cross on his hand. That was something he talked about. He does I, weird yeah. witch magic. He does witch magic. That's well, true. He's a billionaire. They're all weird. Yes. Mm. Yes. Satanic. Yes. Do you think, do you, what is? What do you think the percentage chance is that Elon Musk and Grimes kid like is the herald of the apocalypse? <laughs> Um, like 50 50, right? I think like 50 yeah. 50. Yeah. Yeah. Or the savior. <laughs> or like the next, like Justin Bieber or something. Like, or like, uh, like Baron Trump, you know, where he's just, he's both, he's both a Chad and a gamer at the same time. Oh. Scary. Yeah, yeah. I think, I um, he's the fucking Quizot's Hatterack. Like, he's the fucking chosen one. So, Steyer, I think, um, I don't know. It's hard, man. Like, I don't dislike Steyer. I don't hate Steyer except don't for like everything he's done in his entire career. <laughs> he had a change of heart recently. He started drawing crosses on his hand, and then he... That's, like, in his bio on Wikipedia. What did Steyer get rich with? Like, a lot of... Bad. I looked it up last night and then didn't read the whole article. The first thing I saw was his age, and then I just looked away. There was, like... I think it's, like, he did, like, a lot of buy it, sell it, you know, fucking big you know, fund, oh, Walmart fund manager, shit. Fund. Head fund manager. Yeah. 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 He bought a private prison. That was one thing they grilled him on yesterday. That's what uh, Biden called him, Tommy come lately, which, really? oh boy. I, I, I can't believe Joe Biden got through that debate without calling anyone Mac. Like, <laughs> listen here, Mac. Fucking challenging malarkey, someone to, man. to a fucking push-up competition. Joe Biden brought a lot of malarkey yesterday. I just want to comment. All right, Tulsi, no middle name, Gabbard. She does not have a middle name, my man. I don't even know who that is. Tulsi I Gabbard? Heard, I know her name, but she wasn't there yesterday or the she, time before. So She was in the early debates. She was the one wearing the all-white suit. Mm. She's like a Marine lady. Oh, we can skip that. Yeah, she'd probably <laughs> just kill people for for, uh, pe for fun. <laughs> uh, Michael Rubin Bloomberg. That fucking guy. I'm just like he's awesome. Him. Love him. I, I I'm hoping that he'll sponsor our podcast. So <laughs> oh yeah, I'm seeing what happened with Steyer here. What do we got? What do we got? HQ. Do, 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 uh, do, do, in do, his do. late 30s, he he um be, got involved in the Episcopal Church. Yeah, that's why he does the cross. Thing. Yeah, and then um that's when he he changed uh his mind and became interested in political advocacy. I mean, that's young enough where I can give him some credit for it. 
Yeah. He still has but all that fucking his, money. He also, from what I'm reading here, and this could be wrong, it sounds like he sold all of his stake and stuff and pretty much is liquid. Hmm. Liquid baby. Which is pretty rare for a billionaire. Yeah, for sure. Usually hmm. you keep it all tied up so no one can take it away from you. Yeah, him. so I am I am curious. Uh, yeah, because the shit he was saying, he actually seemed genuine yesterday, and I was like, wow. But. I think that he is, like, I think that there's a certain amount of you're going to be warped from being in a position like that in the first place. So yeah. I don't dis. I don't think he's not genuine or anything. I think that there is definitely like you're in a bubble no matter what you do when you have that much money. Oh, yeah. Um, No doubt. But, you know, if he wants to fucking put his money up and help Bernie get elected, like I think Bernie will say no. But Steyer offering that and Bernie saying no will probably be better for Bernie's electoral chances. Absolutely. Taking it. You don't need money for a presidential election. No, you don't. I mean, especially if you're Bernie Sanders. You, got you get fucking, free publicity. You got the shooters like us, you know, doing the hard work, doing the podcast. He worked on Walter Mondale's presidential campaign. Fantastic. That's interesting. Didn't work out. I don't know if you guys are aware. <laughs> uh, right. Raised money for Bill Bradley and John Kerry. Very cool. This is the Tom Steyer hour. <laughs> Andrew M. Yang. No one knows his middle name, but it's M. Andrew Yang is going to start a startup and then bankrupt it and then pocket <laughs> all the cash. Um, I don't know. Andrew Yang, a motivational speaker? Yeah. I is don't he, know, man. I feel like he could um, start a social media site, like Yang Reddit, basically. <laughs> like it's just, Red, it's just Reddit, but it's just for Andrew Yang people. Myyang.com. <laughs> Yangmeat.com. It's like farmers only or J date. For Yang Yang. But for Yang Yang. So that we don't have to deal with them. Yes. I got a pretty good friend who met his wife on Christian Mail. Has he endorsed anybody yet? (laughs) Yang now. He should endorse fucking Bernie. Yeah, I know he should have. Stop hoping Biden's going to make you VP. It's not happening. That's insane. That's insane behavior. No. Corey Anthony Booker. Is he still in the race? No. (laughs) He needs a job. Batman. Batman? Yeah. Why? Because he's from New Jersey? Yeah. Uh, I'm confused. I to me, Cory Booker has always thrown off a very big camp counselor energy because he always spent half the debates talking about how everyone needs to get along. Mm. That's his main policy position. He also loves pharmaceutical companies, so maybe he'll maybe he'll do team building stuff for a farm company. Mm. That'd be nice, right? Seems like a good career. You don't know yeah. the whole like uh, fire rescue story about Booker? No. Yeah, um, apparently he, uh, like, went in and, like, rescued a woman from a house house fire. Oh, good for him. Yeah. He went into the burning building uh, after breaking the restraints of a police detective in order to rescue a woman. I don't know, man. Wait, what? That sounds, sounds, if it's true, cool as fuck. Threw her over his shoulder and carried her to safety and sustained second-degree burns. So, Cory Booker fought a cop and then saved a woman? So Batman. That's some Batman shit. All right. Well, then let's bring up the final one on my list here. The the Joker herself, Marianne Williamson. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> she's been oh, Joker. Oh, shit. I forgot about her, man. Yeah, dude. She's, wow. put, she's putting all Bernie's uh, enemies into orbs where they can't hurt him. <laughs> mm. Only if you visualize in your mind spirituality, Brendan, pay attention. I think the Disco Biscuits need a new dancer. Mm-hmm. Cult leader. Cult, yes. That's her, that's her, her job. Yeah, she'll be the Bogwan. Uh, daytime host. Daytime. Oh, yeah. She could have the view in a Bernie America. Oh, my God. Put her on the view. Just yes. her and Meghan McCain. That's it. No. Meghan McCain's not enough to to contain Marianne's will. No, energy. I want to watch Marianne Williamson slowly <laughs> and calmly dismantle Meghan McCain. But that's what I'm saying. <laughs> Has with, she been on there with her? I don't think so. Oh, that would be amazing. Marianne Williamson would have Meghan McCain eating out of her hand within a week. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Like she would have her on a juice cleanse or some shit. But then Megan McCain would be like, "My dad's John McCain." Yeah, and then and Mary Nell Williamson would be like, "I'm ru- I'm taking the illusions from your mind. Remember, your father is a war criminal <laughs> and a bad pilot. You can't crash six planes. You just can't. I don't know how else to explain this to you, Megan. Your father was Donald Trump. They're the same. They're the same." <laughs> Uh, remember when uh, when John McCain shit away the presidency by choosing uh, <laughs> choosing uh, Marian the, the Marianne Williamson of his day, <laughs> <laughs> fucking what's her face, uh, yeah. Palin. Sarah Palin. Palin. I was Thank God say Sarah she Putin. faded from the public. Yeah, yeah, she got the reality show though. That was pretty sick. Yeah, That's true. Did you hear that? Uh, I'm just uh, thinking of crazy like crazy motherfuckers that like disappeared. Do you hear like uh, uh, 
the dude that killed Trayvon Martin is now like suing yeah people uh, the family or something. Yeah, of course he is. Uh, yeah, Zimmerman. I, I hear a lot of things about him. Zimmerman a lot of the time. <laughs> like DMX sold. is gonna fight him for ten thousand dollars. <laughs> Fuck or yeah! Someone has a hit out on him for that dude 30, was 30 like the right wing darling for like like a month. Yeah. Yep. And uh, then we were like, no, the guy's a psycho, and they were like, you just hate him. And blah, blah. then he and got then in trouble out, again. No, yeah. Total fucking psycho. Yeah. I mean, he sold the gun that killed Trayvon Martin. Yeah. Like that's fucking crazy. Yeah. That's. I've got Kamala and Beto here. Does anyone have any hot ones? Beto? Oh, he needs to go and just hang out with After Driving. He needs to join and I think that play Beto, guitar. I feel, I don't do you not know it. about this? No. Beto O'Rourke used to be in a band with Cedric. Really? From After Driving, yeah. Damn. He loves There's to stand, pictures, on, dude, stand yeah. on tables, too. Uh, I think he should just open a coffee shop. He seems like a coffee shop-ass motherfucker. And then Kamala Harris probably just opened a private prison because Kamala Harris is a fucking <laughs> cop. Yeah, she's the worst. I'm glad she was out. She's my least favorite. Yeah, she she it's funny because she was supposed to be the one to take it and she ended up just fucking falling flat on her face like just like an accelerated version of Hillary Clinton. Wait, like, didn't it, didn't the culty trip out lady fuck her up though? Marianne Williams? <laughs> yeah. Um I think she or no no, who was it? It was Twitter, Tulsi Gabbard. Much, it was Tulsi, Tulsi Ga- Oh, Tulsi yeah, Gabbard. Yeah, no, yeah. no. Well, she she talked about Hillary Clinton. That was the big blowout with Tulsi. She had, Tulsi actually has a um defamation lawsuit against Hillary Clinton because oh. she fucking Hillary Clinton decided to say that Tulsi Gabbard, an American Marine, is a Russian intelligence agent. <laughs> Which is not true. Pete Buttigieg, however, is an American intelligence <laughs> agent. Remember when the right wing tried to use Beto O'Rourke was in a band as a way to make people think he's not cool? Yeah, it just <laughs> they just took a bunch of pictures of him like hot, like in his prime, not standing on tables, standing on the ground where people like him. Um, and they, they're just like this, this degenerate piece of shit. They tried Skate, to do the same thing with skateboarding uh, with AOC motherfucker with her dancing video. Yeah, they're like, uh, oh, look at her dancing. Like she looks cool. She's in a music video. <laughs> you fucking morons. You hate <laughs> fun. And you think everybody else hates fun. <laughs> All right. Well, I think we got. Those are the whole. That's the whole slate. So no, I'm, there's like 50 more people that. We yeah, but who about. the fuck is Rob Delaney? Richard Ojeda should have stayed. Who in the, the race. fuck is that? Richard Ojeda would have been. Who's amazing. Deval Patrick? Who is he? Isn't he like in Massachusetts? Massachusetts guy. Governor? Governor. At some point. Is he the governor now? I don't know. I don't care. Nobody cared, and that's why his <laughs> came in. Should have I remember when early. all the stories were like, fucking Duval Patrick's in the ring. Oh, my God. And then just, no. no. <laughs> Nobody cared. I, know, I never heard that name in my life. Yeah. They were like, this is the, they, it was when they were trying to do the like, okay, we need somebody. It's anybody. Who's going to be the guy that's going to do something about this? Mm. And then, like, it was one person after the other getting in the race, and then, like, everybody being like, nah, <laughs> not interested. Nah. Let's go to bed. <laughs> and the establishment will totally go for Trump. <laughs> yes, they will. All right. Well, on that note, let's all just say it together. Death to Bloomberg. Um, oh, we didn't do Bloomberg? We did. Okay. I mean, I said I, we'd put a bullet in his head. Oh. He's, he's, he needs to take a big nap. No more, no more of this. He's worked too hard. He worked so hard to get his money, Brendan. He worked hard you for it. I like be? him more than Pete. Let, <laughs> I'll put that out there. Let, let's make him a farmer. <laughs> <laughs> Teach him how labor works, motherfucker. <laughs> you saw his quote about farmers, right? No, what'd he say? He said, uh, farming, you just uh, just put a seed in the ground and then it grows. <laughs> you know, but now it's all technology and that actually requires a brain. That's fantastic. That's a pretty good Bloomberg impression, then, too, I must say. Thank you. <laughs> On that note. Thanks for having me on, guys. Thank yeah. you so much, Zach. Zach, where does everyone find your beautiful music? YouTube.com. Wait, yeah. Uh, DJSoriasis.bandcamp.com or go to YouTube.com slash mm-hmm. DJSoriasis. The hardest oh. part is getting the psoriasis spelled, spelled right. Yeah. But it's not that hard. It's P-S-O-R-I-A-S, you know? W- just wikifeet.com. Yes. Wikifeet.com <laughs> slash A-O-C. You can find me in the comment section. Oh, yeah. I'm also plugging a live stream that I'm doing on my YouTube where I'm making beats live. And oh, I'm also cool. plugging, um, I'm starting to make clothing that you can buy soon. If you follow DJ Srizes, you'll figure it out. Fantastic. <laughs> I And if you follow us, you know I'm going to be retweeting, reposting you know all that it. shit, baby. We stick by our mans. Yep. Even when he falls down in Troy. <laughs> hurts himself so bad. That shit fucking hurts, man. <laughs> I got to go. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And as always, can I get a little juice? 
Can get some it's been as always. <laughs> you can get a little little of that. Beaches. Yeah.